Having said that, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just actually, on the way here, I got an email from the publicist for We the Animals, mm-hmm. and they squared away the time on Monday. I'm going to be meeting with uh, Jeremiah. Oh, great. And uh, Raul. Yeah. Oh, Raul. great, great. Raul Castillo. <laughs> who, oh, wonderful. Who I'm excited about because I've known him a long time. Oh, he really? A, yeah, Raul, who's the, you know, your leading man in this film, he um, was in a film small film that friends of mine made years ago. I was on a Tribeca like in 10 or 11. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. And it was, uh, he was one of the main actors in it. And I was like, that guy's, you know, I'd never saw him before, but I, I saw, I thought he's, he's kind of interesting to watch. You know, yeah. he's got some, you know, he's totally convincing. I, I, I thought maybe, he's great. You know, he played like an immigrant, Mexican immigrant mm-hmm. here in Long Island getting day jobs, you know, mm-hmm. and I thought, oh, no, this guy must, not, I didn't think he was that, of course, but I thought he must be, you know, like first generation or an immigrant just because he was that good. And now, you know, HBO. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's, uh, he's all over the place. I mean, this yeah. year, especially he's, yeah. he's, I, I think he's got a few more movies coming out and sure. there's a TV show or something he's doing now too. And, yeah. Yeah. So I've been wanting to get him on for a while. So this is, was a nice turn. And, uh, uh, Sheila Vend, who is mm-hmm. the band, who is the uh, his coast co star, uh, she was on before because she I had on uh, when 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 they did uh, the girl walks home alone at night. Oh yeah, that's a wonderful film. It is, yeah. and uh, so I had her. She was on for that, so I was hoping to get her on too. But you know, she, I guess she's not around. But you're here. And I'm here, and you shot the film. Yes. And it's just, it's really like what must have been fun for you and gratifying for it, you. It was fun. We actually shot on film. Which just doesn't happen much these days. Not much. Yeah. It's not necessarily the most practical thing, one would think. Well, it's not the most impractical thing either. It's What is it? it it's, <laughs> it's made a comeback. Um, no, I know it's making a comeback. Uh, you know, All the DJs uh, use it instead of uh, oh, CDs. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> Excuse me, I get him confused. <laughs> um, well, you know, Kodak uh, has opened a lab yes. in Long Island City. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't take advantage of that for the movie because they opened up about a month or two after we wrapped. Oh, I see. So, um, so we had a more uh, kind of uh, you know, roundabout way of, of mm-hmm. going about it. We had to send the film went to, went into the bath um, in Boston and then got shipped from Boston to New York to get scanned. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, the process, it, it really was kind of reinventing the wheel because the process is completely different from what it was. Have you shot seven or eight years ago? Oh yeah. Oh. When, I mean, when I, when I first started my career, it was okay. digital. It was before digital was a thing. Okay. Um, a real viable option, a real viable two. option. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, um, uh, you know, for a long time I was shooting 35 or 16 yeah. for all the commercial work or okay. film work. Um, and then, um, you know, and then, and then it, uh, uh, you know, the digital stuff really hit its stride and, Geez, I could, you know, I was thinking about the other day. I think it's probably been before We the Animals. It had maybe been five or six years before I had shot since I'd shot film. Mm. Um, so in that time, though, the kind of um, the normal workflow has mm-hmm. ha, is no longer available. Um, so you Be know, specific. Give an example. Well, so like you know, you used to do you used to do like circle takes, and you would you would develop everything, but then you would only print. The, the just the little bits that were good you know now the scanning has gotten cheap enough oh, okay. that it you don't really do that anymore now you just kind of develop everything and scan everything oh you um, do really? yeah That's... and then you're and then you're also doing instead of coloring off the negative where you would have you'd have the scanner you know linked up in the, mm-hmm. in the color suite you know now it's pretty typical that you would just scan everything at 4k kind of a flat pass and then and then that would be your uh your your kind of new negative like the thing that you're actually coloring so when you're scanning it though then you're digitizing it yeah and you're doing color from there you're doing post on that yes that becomes your new your new master basically yeah so you don't you don't go back to the film right so what happens to the film well good question (laughs) (laughs) i hope somebody's holding on to it uh, yeah, I think it's, mm. I, I think it's being stored. I don't, I don't know where it's being stored, but, but the, I, I'm assuming it is. But the texture is, is, is there in a way yeah. that you feel, is it a Zen more of a, or is it even more of a Zen thing when you're shooting it? Is it, or are you thinking just in terms of the texture and the, the feel, the look 
the warmth that's there. Are you t- are you that's re- s- you know getting to sort of like the di- the differences between digital and film or yeah I mean um, if you the uh, like why go through the why go through the pain of yeah of, it's an, yes, extra of step. an arcane it's, uh, format. Well, I, you know, I mean, it's a nice I, marketing point. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's a, I think it's a valid question, and it's one that I think everybody asks. But basically, so if they, have, they have a podcast, they do. Well, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, or if they're a producer, or yes, oh yeah, or or right. many many people wonder like, well, why why mm-hmm. would we do that? It's yeah. it's so easy to do digital. You know, there's there are a lot of subtle things to the to the look to the difference of, of the way things look. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whether it's highlight or color. Um, skin tones, the texture of the grain, um, and even the size of the format, you know, 60 millimeter versus like 35 millimeter. Oh yeah. So 60 millimeter, especially I think really still has this real feeling to it and undeniably. Yeah. And you can, you know, you can set about to sort of recreate that after the fact mm-hmm. and you can get pretty close to be honest, but not quite all the way there. And there's just, you know, there's something false about doing it that way. You know, you're not really, Mm. you know, going through the process, you know, you're just kind of putting this patina on after, Mm -hmm. you know, and typically that kind of, when you do that, you're just putting grain over it. It looks a little flatter. The highlights don't look the same. Yeah. Interesting to have come from a film background, you know, where, and then to transition to digital and then to come back. And then there's this sort of, um, what ethical? I don't know if that's the right word, but there is a aesthetic grappling that you can, you can go through, but somebody who just graduated film school two or three years ago who mm-hmm. doesn't, you know, and just goes by that wouldn't have that dilemma because they don't have the choices. There isn't, I mean, now, yeah, maybe they will if they, now if they may have to kind of start experimenting with film, you know. In the first part of the process, though, where you're shooting, Mm-hmm. How do you have you have options there even like you know ex- in terms of how you expose the film I don't know or is it yeah is well it, I mean that that's some of that done during production or pre production yeah well both I mean sh- I mean that really one of the wonderful things about film mm-hmm. is that it it puts a lot of the control back into the cinematographer's hands oh yeah that um, you know with, the, sure. with digital now you have. You know, you, obviously you have a lot of control, but there's a lot of a lot of stuff can be done in the color mm-hmm. process or or with onset color with a DIT. And you're you're you know, you're kind of really collaborating with a lot of people to make that look. And you do that on film as well. But with film, you have a few more kind of uh, creative tools in your toolkit you can use. Mm. You can do things like. Uh, you know, underexposing and overdeveloping or overdeveloping and underexposing, you know, mm-hmm. push and pull yeah, process. That's right. Just kidding. You can, mm-hmm. you know, even the choice of the film stock is going to, you know, is going to create different looks, different amounts of grain, different right, right. Uh, color or black and white. And this is where you're, as you sort of suggested, where you're in this sort of a, the co-pilot seat now because you're, this is where you're going to have the most say, right? At that juncture because yeah. you haven't, you don't have any of the post people involved yet yeah exactly there's a yeah. <clears throat> there's a lot of um kind of big decisions about the look mm-hmm. made in pre-production that i would of course do on a digital production as well but you know on, on a digital production often you're you're sort of um finalizing those the, those kind of ideas in in yeah. post-production whereas you know with film we're we're front loading a lot of those decisions so you know if we want something for example to be really grainy you know maybe we want to push process 500 mm-hmm. speed film and just really get a bunch of grain on it. And, mm-hmm. you know, and that's, that's a decision we're going to make mm-hmm. in pre-production with testing and, mm-hmm. and, and then on set, you know, whereas, you know, with digital, you would just probably add more grain and post on it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, which, but in your mind, they're tricks. Well, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're kinda, just different, you know, yeah, it's, it's they're um, plugins and <laughs> they're plugins. Uh, you know, there, there are s- some that have gotten better than others. Yeah, um, I'm sure. in, in terms of, um, you know, on, on film, the, the grain has to do with the sort of the density on the negative. So highlights and, and shadow are going to have different amounts of grain, yep. you know? So if, if digitally you're just putting flat grain over everything, it's not going to really look like film because, you know, mm-hmm. the way the shadows and the highlights will, will kind of have the same amount of grain if it's just a flat when you, uh, when you thing. Yeah. When you mentioned, um, you should have the full set of tools at your 
Is the, was that kind of what you said? Yeah. Because uh, did you did you by any chance get a chance to listen to? Did you by any chance get an opportunity to listen to Ed Lockman, who was on my show? Oh ago? no, I didn't. But did I know that he's on there. Um, I, I actually I'd love to listen to that. Jeremiah was just telling me. Jeremiah, the director of the yeah. film, was just telling me that he met up with Ed Lockman at a screening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got and it. and they had a great conversation and and um you know so i've, I've never actually met ed but oh, we've yeah. we have some of um we share some of the same crew sometimes and and so so I, I, he's you know. right there you know it's funny because i would been, been he goes to uh typically the uh new york film festival press and industry screenings which are coming up actually they just announced you probably saw they just announced the uh the slate for the festival and they'll have starting in a few weeks they'll start having the press and industry screenings and Ed goes to all of them. Like he's just there, and you, you know, I've seen him there for years, but I, yeah. you know, I never had the nerve. I don't know. I just didn't ever heard it. And finally, I just thought, I'm just let's just let me just ask him to do the podcast. So he did. He could have been nicer, and he was so nice. I just warm and and uh, available, and and he talks about it. And I one one of the things that really kind of sped things up for me was that I saw him and, and Storaro in a mm. conversation last year mm-hmm. at the New York Film Festival. Wonderful. Actually, during a pa- they had a panel together. Kent Jones moderated and they talked about their feelings about and and Storaro who's probably like 80 years old or something he's so pro digital he's just like yeah interesting and Lockman let him talk and he quite and he did talk <laughs> the old guy talked for a long time and then Ed Lockman he goes you know I'm, I took a very opposing you know uh, perspective where he, he just said you know why limit the film why why limit the the cinematographer why limit them when they could have as many tools and options and choices of, yeah you know that exactly. makes the most sense you know yeah so he made a real i thought a, a good case and then we talk about it a bit more on the show on the podcast so if you get a chance to listen to that oh yeah well, i would definitely check that out he that sounds great yeah i mean i was a little intimidated because i didn't know how much into the you know details i was going to get with him i kind of mm-hmm. wanted to just well he's been around so long and he's worked with everybody and he's been yeah. had his hands on so many famous films i just want to hear stories you know yeah <laughs> That's really, yeah yeah how do you pin it down just to one it, topic it was impossible or, yeah. it was really impossible because i wanted to hear like also about his collaborations in more detail and there were, just wasn't nearly enough time i mean we sat for an hour and a half probably but out of that me was an hour and 10 15 minute and you know conversation that i edited uh but i mean you could just spend an hour and a half with him on todd haynes yeah all those totally. films, and then you know he yeah. also has like uh, Ulrich Seidel. He's got a very long, involved relationship with making a bunch mm-hmm. of films, and then you know a number of others. So, let's talk about We the Animals. Uh, yeah. This guy, I, uh, I was so glad that uh, it was put on my radar. I don't. Where did it premiere? Well, it uh, Sundance. Okay, it did so yeah, yeah, it was at Sundance this past winter. So the story is is a coming of age story yeah. about um, this the young kid. boy named Jonah, okay. and um, and you know, and he throughout the the film he does um, discover a little bit about his sexuality. Okay, and um, um, you know, so that's that's and it's it's actually that's a right. true story. It's it's oh, a, right. it's a I memoir for, written I had by completely Justin forgot. No. The kids in this film, uh, there's three brothers, three brothers, right? And they yeah. they have so much time to at least you know they're not really being parented <laughs> yeah well it's you know Your parents are going through this really it's the 90s before devices took over right it's um it's summertime mm-hmm. right. um they live in a in a small community a small nowhere. town yeah, in the right. middle of nowhere yeah. and uh mom and Days pops are, are, are are largely absent you know mm-hmm. they are they are you know it's physically or otherwise well both yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. um Right. Yeah. Pop, Pops has his sort of issues. He's he's in and out of work and in and out of their lives. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, Ma is, uh, I think, a little more uh, stable of a presence. But depre- dealing but, with depression. But Emotional dealing with issues. exactly. So yeah. emotionally, she's not always present. Right. Um, so the kids sort of learn how to take care of themselves, each other and even their do. parents at times um, or learn, try to figure out how to navigate that. They do, and, and and it's it's messy and beautiful and yeah. sad and funny, and you know they're they're emulating their parents who are mm-hmm. totally imperfect, and yeah, so yeah. that that kind of leads you down all those paths. Yeah, um, that is you know, and we all some, one way or another are fuck up like that. Yeah, uh, I mean you know you want to enter into the when you start having kids, you swear you're just gonna be fully present, engaged, do the right things. And, you know, and, yeah. you know. and then reality sets in. Huh? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. There's a, of course, a otherworldliness about the film. There is a, a cinematic nature to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it it's very much. Some people might describe it as a kind of a poetic film or experimental in its approach. Well, there. It, I mean, there are moments I would call magical realism. Magical realism um, was the term I was trying to remember. Yeah. It you know, does. there's there's um, you know, at uh, at the end of the film when he rises up out of the out of the, and to, the right. grave yeah. and um, we don't want to talk he about imagine that. himself flying and yeah, um, that, you know, he does not die in the film. So no, just no, that, he does not. But there is a grave in the story. Yes, there is a pops that. pops digs a hole in the ground. Yeah, and um, that's all we have to yeah. say. But um, but yeah, there, I mean, there are moments. You know, there's there's a water motif. Mm-hmm. Um, a drowning motif, um, and um, oh, right. and yeah. So and, and and he is there's you know there's also the the animation animation have, have under the fun. bed and and his drawing right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. so that does it were all this in, was all the were, were these all these things in the script? Um, they, I mean they were. I mean every scene is in the script. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the the animations were actually added after. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they kind of solved a problem, um, that existed, uh, uh, you know, of really fully, uh, illuminating Jonah's internal world. Mm-hmm. And I think that, um, I think that the, the animations really became a really elegant solution for that. Um, but, but they weren't written in the script. Mm-hmm. Um, now everything else, uh, everything else was, was scripted, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, you know, within that, we, we obviously try to let the kids be kids and sure. let them be free and try yeah. not to, yeah. you know, confine them too much. They were all non-actors. So it was important that we, you know, kind of let them yeah. just exist and, and be who they are, you know. Right. Makes sense. Well, they seemed very natural. They're, they're fantastic. Yeah. They, they, a thousand kids. They looked at, a, a, or almost a thousand kids. Really? Yeah. Where did they shoot it? Uh, we shot it in Utica, New York, Utica, upstate. Mm-hmm, sure. Um, yeah. So, pretty yeah. pretty far up there, though. Yeah. The snow belt. Yeah. It, well, not, oh yeah. Not during the summer, but yeah. Not far from the Finger Lakes. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So we did, um, and we did, we did, sh- we did shoot in the summer and the winter. So we did do a winter portion okay. as well, which, yeah. which, you know, we yeah. want, we wanted that yeah. snow. I'm so glad I'm talking yeah. to you. It's a lot of things are coming back. And yeah, hot, the yeah. synapses are. No, the end. Good. So the end of the film yeah, yeah. is um, mm-hmm. it flashes yeah. forward like six months. Right. And so we, we wanted to actually, you know, it was important that we see the kids kind of grow up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, sure. They got a little more hair. Yeah, yeah. We see the seasons have changed, and um, mm-hmm. so it was important to right schedule the film that way. Yeah. The uh, cycle of life continues. And um, did you? How did you? And uh, how did you uh, end up being collaborating with Jeremiah, the director? So, um, well, I've known Jeremiah for a long time. Okay. Um, I'm, it's funny. It's like I don't, I'm not even sure if I could tell you mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. we met mm-hmm. originally. Well, you but know. we've done. Mm-hmm. We we've you know um, I mean we've become friends over the years as well as collaborators. Um, we've done a variety of uh, documentaries together and commercial oh, yeah. work together. Okay. And, um, so early on when Jeremiah was talking about doing this, his first narrative feature, you know, he talked to me about it pretty early on and, mm-hmm. and which was great because we got, we got a real jump on, uh, pre-production and prepping, you know, just on our own on days off, he and I were able to get together and, um, shot list, talk right. through Flesh scenes, talk through mm-hmm. ideas and, it um, makes sense. yeah. And he was even, I mean, they were, they were writing the script the whole time even. So I, you know, I think he was even sometimes as we would talk and, you know, going back to incorporate things we've talked about or mm-hmm. th- things he saw on location or that kind of, that kind of stuff to incorporate it right into the script. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it was a great, it was, it was a nice process. Uh, you know, a lot of these in- independent films, when they bring on a, a DP, they, you know, you get like maybe, I don't know, two, two to four weeks of prep or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't sound uh, too bad, but well, it's not, you know, I mean, especially when you're dealing with a couple weeks, it's, yeah, that's um, pretty tight. It, it is a little constrained, you know, mm-hmm. you're definitely yeah. like, if you want, you know, cause you're trying to do, you want to have the time to kind of work with the director one-on-one flush everything out, mm-hmm. you know, how, 
you know, talk about how you want to construct the film visually, the language you want to use, but then you also want to be able to go and shoot tests of everything, how? try out different ideas, see what works. Oh, uh, tests. Yeah. yeah, that takes a while. Like, did J- Jeremy, he, Jeremiah, he, he wrote the film? Yeah, so... So did uh, he know he wanted film when he approached you? Did you, did you, when he brought it up, did he know from the start, or did, is it just something that came up pretty quick? With, I'm sorry, with... Yeah, with choosing to shoot it on film. Oh, to, oh, the, so yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I think that, I think Jeremiah from, so he, him and, him and his friend Dan, um, adapted it from the book. Okay. So it's based on the New York Times bestseller of the same name, um, by Justin Torres. Uh And, um, and I, I'm pretty sure when they were adapting the book, he, he was already probably thinking about shooting on film. Mm -hmm. Um, it that was, was written, the author of the book, Torres. He 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 intended it to be shot on film. <laughs> yeah, I so think so. a, I think he wrote better. it. Page one was yeah. you know this we wanted more. Sh- we wanted the shot on. As film. you're thinking of this, visualizing my story as you read it, do shoot it on film. Shoot it on film. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, in a way, and I think it is because because the <laughs> you know the film it does take place in the '90s. It is. Yes, this, that's right. That's right. This is it puts you more in the. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is exactly the format that you would f- that would feel, I think, appropriate for the. Yeah, period. it's a little meta, right? If if you um, start thinking in that dimensional way, I was remember uh, seeing. Did you see that it was a Bam Cinema Fest? Uh, this was like a fictional telling based on a real documentary. Yeah, but like it was like the making of, and they shot it on. Super, what is it called? High video, high tap video. I forget what it's called, but it was all done, and they couldn't look at it as they filmed. So, however, it came out. Yeah, but it looked like. Like is a, the 80s kind yeah. of when they shot it you yeah. know it was uh it's a remarkable film it's called jason and shirley you should try to mm, definitely check it out it. yeah yeah stephen winter is the director it's amazing it how really much a, it could a chance it could have been too much of a gimmick but it for, yeah i thought it came out really it, it they were managed because of the performances and the the uh you know the commitment they really made a, a great film you know yeah we were i mean speaking of documentaries with for We the Animals, we, we were watching, um, mm-hmm. there's a documentary about um, Mary Ellen Mark's work uh, doing street photography in uh, mm-hmm. Portland um, called Streetwise. Oh, yeah. Uh, from the 80s. And um, speaking of documentary, that was that was definitely um, something we looked at for, oh, really? for, for, the, for the look of yeah, We the Animals. And, uh-huh. But it's, um, yeah, shot, I mean, it's shot. Verite style, handheld right. on on sixteen millimeter, and sure, that was kind of seminal, right? Looks looks amazing, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just I think that speak, you know, you know, choosing these old formats, mm-hmm. there is something that it gives you. It's like a conduit to mm-hmm. to the past, and I That's think that um, I think that it just it just gets you to that thing more quickly, you know, <laughs> as a viewer when you when you sit down in the theater and watch that, watch that image that's made from, you know, absolutely the, an eight millimeter camera or 16 millimeter or yeah. even some old video camera, high yeah. eight camera, your camcorder from the early nineties, you know, it's right away you transport you there. It's and, true. Yeah. It's right. So it's, it's, you know, I think in that way too, it's a great shortcut. Um, mm. it's a language everyone kind of recognizes right away. Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, we're going to have on also on the same episode. I don't know how it's all going to flesh out, but we will, <laughs> people have already heard maybe the conversation with uh, the Jeremiah. What's his last name? Jeremiah Zagar. Zagar. Right? Yeah. Jeremiah Zagar with Jeremiah Zagar, the director, and Raul Castillo, who's the, uh, the one of the actors in the film. Uh, it's a small cast, too. That, that had to be a benefit yeah. as for any, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was, you know, it was, was nice. Was there like six people in the movie? Yeah, I mean, I mean, really, there's, f- I mean, five main people. Typically. There's mom, there's mom a couple and pops, of neighbors. and then there's there's the three kids. Yeah. And then there's, um, yeah, there's, couple there's a couple kids. neighbors, there's right. a few other people. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, mostly it was, yeah. it was, it's, it's, it, you know, it was pretty much those five, the mm-hmm. family, um, which was really nice, you know, it was great because, and the kids are in almost every scene. Mm-hmm. Or I think every scene, um, you know, so we couldn't shoot very long days. Um, we had, um, you know, er- early on in pre-production, we, you know, we talked about trying to shoot more days mm-hmm. than, than, than kind of cram it all in, into too few, too few shooting days. And right. So it was really, I, I think, a really nice process mm-hmm. um, compared to uh, maybe other similarly budgeted mm-hmm. 
films. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, it looks like uh, it's paid off. It's opening, I think it's something like 80 or 90 theaters throughout the U.S. Um, That's fantastic for a small film like this. Yeah. Um, So August 17th, it premieres. Mm -hmm. Um, In New York, it's the Angelica. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on 57th Street, there's a theater. Yeah, the Landmark West. Yeah. The Landmark at West 57th, I think it's called. Yes. Yeah. And then I think that there's one or two more theaters. I forget which ones, though, off the top of my head. Maybe in the New York maybe, area. In the New York area, maybe, maybe Bam Brooklyn. is one, or I've, well, I we'll forget. Don't quote out. me. No, don't worry about um, it. I got it under control. I'll but it um, all, all but yeah, it's 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 getting a fairly wide release, which is which is nice, and hopefully, yeah, you know, if people like it, it'll it can go even wider. Yeah, know, there so. you go, and maybe more people will shoot on film. Then. Maybe, yeah. All right. Uh, well, come back on when we have another. Also, next time when you have another project. Of course, any time. Any time. to get into the weeds a little bit with you. Take care. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, any time.